Hi, Emily. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's get into the talk about um, the female energy and the practices we can do during this quarantine time to get a little bit more more healthy and more grounding energies going. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself um, at the beginning so so we know? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so my name's Emily and I, I'm a certified health and mindset coach. Um, I actually specialize with supporting women and repairing their relationships to their bodies and themselves um, so that they can have everything they want in their life where you know, so so often it's our body stories and our relationship to food that holds us back from what we actually want to achieve. So um, that's it's a really interesting time to be, you know, working with people on that right now. Um, and then also just with myself. So it's a little bit about me. <laughs> yes. Um, like that's why I really enjoy like sharing with you because I think we're in on a similar path but maybe a little bit from from a different perspective but um, well I'm a yoga and meditation teacher and intuitive coach and I also like at the moment I'm just uh, in front of you as a woman who tries to stay aligned with my higher self as much as possible throughout the day not the easy thing but I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to practice it daily and it has really like changed um, the way I see the world and the reality and how I feel I can create re the reality around me so yeah okay amazing yes <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into the talk and maybe we can start from just some like daily practices starting from the morning what people can do to just improve their life quality and and have a more like in tuned empowered um day yeah yeah definitely i think um the first thing that i probably want to bring up is that you know it, i think it's really important especially right now with everything going on i mean this is an unprecedented situation and we're being challenged to show up for ourselves in a way that we've never been challenged before so i think it's important to sort of like preface this conversation with the understanding and the like i, I just want to like put it out there to people to have self-compassion because the tough days are probably a little bit tougher right now than the tough days when things were quote unquote normal. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, our best days are also going to be a little bit different than what we used to think our best days should or were lo did look like. And it's not that they're worse now, it's just different. So I just want to preface all of this by saying that what's most important right now is that we hold a huge amount of compassion for ourselves and other people through this process. And part of being compassionate, I think largely has to do with softening our standards when in some areas while holding up our standards in other areas so that we don't completely burn out. Um, so I, I just wanted to start with that because I think um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there on social media right now, you know, things like if you're not starting a business, you're wasting this quarantine or, mm. you know, if you're not getting your dream body, then you're you're just being lazy and not using this time. And I think that that can be really toxic and actually instead of motivating it actually demotivates us and we end up getting less done than we would anyway. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yes. I just really feel like that's like a really important p piece of this. And I wanted to make a point of talking about that a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect. I, I really I feel the same. And I've been talking with especially with women and and they they really uh, they've been telling me the, the exact same thing. Um, but like what what if like any kind of judgment comes comes up, like how can you take it down? Like what do you use for that? Yeah, that's a super, that's a really good question. I honestly think the first thing about it is just having the awareness that we're self-judging is yeah. is the first part. Because I think, you know, the, the negative self-talk and self-judgment, it's so common and it's something that most of us have done for such a long time that when we're doing it, we don't even necessarily realize we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's when we have that lack of awareness, that's when things really, you know, 
that's that's when it really starts to take over our lives and it's like this silent killer of our joy so i think just having that awareness and being able to step back and say i'm self-judging and then we come back into a place of choice and then we can decide what we want to do from there on out and i mean all of us have our own innate wisdom so if we can take a step back that wisdom does kick in and i think that for most people we do know exactly what to do in that moment to what choice we want to make different that's different yeah yeah and, and isn't it funny like we are so judgmental about ourselves but like when we talk with our friends we want to be this like super su supportive um person to them like why can't we have this relationship with ourselves why can't be ourselves best friends but it's it's so hard so mm -hmm. so what i sometimes do i share my because i've i've grown up in a in a way that first I'm always seeing the negative things because my parents were trying to prepare me for the life and and all this is still in my head so whenever something come comes up I think through all the negative scenarios but this is really actually keeping me from anything positive to happen but when, when I sometimes share it with a friend they see it completely from a different perspective and they can give me this support which I couldn't give to myself but like now I'm slowly trying trying to do that but it's yeah, like trying to be friends with yourself. It's it's uh, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I love that being friends with yourself because I know we're so much more cruel to ourselves than we would ever be to another human being. Even our worst enemy, we wouldn't be as cruel to most of us as we are yeah. to ourselves. Um, and it is funny. It kind of is like a muscle that you have to start building up because I think when you first start that journey of like self love or you know sort of like the judgment detox. Um, it feels really kind of like weird, maybe inauthentic or even kind of cringy, like, oh, who am I right now? Like I'm saying all these nice things to myself, you know, yeah. it's like all of these levels of judgment and like low self-worth, like I don't deserve to even be in this moment. And I think the hardest part is just allowing it to be weird for as long as it's going to be weird until it becomes yeah not weird and then and then it starts to become exciting and then it starts to actually you start to actually see how it's manifesting in your life positively but it can take time um yeah it's a journey it's not it's not just a switch because you know those neuron pathways that are so ingrained in our i mean if you've been doing it your whole life you're not just it's not just a spiritual or like you know journey it's also a mental one we have to literally restructure our brains and so you know, I think if, if it's really tough or it feels weird right now, that's just your physiology kind of putting up a wall and it can be changed over time. So yeah. That's such a good point. Mm. Yeah. And being gentle through this. So it's, it's, it's so true. It, it takes time. I remember the first time I was like trying to read the affirmations out loud or something. And I was like, what is this like why I'm, like this is so stupid and then I like recognize this like restricting like part of me who was like yeah just like restricting everything and like judging everything and like I, I slow like it felt so uncomfortable like I didn't want this this side to be so loud and and uh, so I started reading affirmations out loud and putting them everywhere in my room so they're like always there so I get like I somehow teach myself that it's okay and yeah it, it takes it takes a while it does. yeah <laughs> turn it around yeah I love that though I love how you just sort of like inundated your reality with them like it's like I know it's weird but I'm not just gonna say them I'm gonna stick them all over my life because <laughs> <laughs> that really is how you have to do it it's like you have to like yeah. You have to almost become obnoxious to yourself like initially yeah. it's just like why am i even doing this and then it and then it becomes fun so that's yeah that's really yeah. good it's like exposure therapy like the more i see it the less weird it's going to be yeah. over time yeah yeah it's and really like taking it as a game and then like, making it fun like that can really help so yeah gamifying <laughs> gamifying exactly <laughs> shout out to jerry Bull. yeah <laughs> Um, yeah I actually I had a question for you um you know so being like a meditation teacher I'm finding it like a little bit challenging right now to meditate and I don't know if it's just because I have this sort of like underlying anxiety that I'm sure we all have that's kind of preventing me from like breaking through a certain threshold with myself that it used to be a little bit more automatic 
when I would meditate. But it's not just like once I sit down to meditate, it's also like there's I have this sort of like newfound resistance against doing it at all. Um, so I'm just curious, like what your thoughts are on that, like what you've experienced with that yourself and also just with people that you know or work with. Yeah. Um, to be completely honest, I, I find it hard to meditate at the moment as well. Like, but at the same time, when I get into the zone, I feel I can get like so much more connected than, than, than before and it's like even easier to access like the beings around you and really like get connection with your light family or like some 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 guidance like it's really like here it's present but it's hard to sit down and find this time and and to do this like even like i we have this anxiety around us all the time and the these vibrations are very strong and um yeah to like take this to find this space to even like for a couple of seconds to get into alignment or get into the vortex it's it takes much more effort I feel Mm -hmm. Um, but when you get there you can like get so much more knowledge or it's 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 powerful so I think it's um, in a way like it's just worth trying because like the the blessings coming in they're 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 big so um yeah just like trying to do it as a daily routine and just sitting there trying every day i think with the meditation it it is important to just like stick to it every single day Mm. yeah Yeah. it's one of those habits that really requires that diligence Mm. um and the cool, the cool thing about meditation is it's a it might take a little bit of energy but you get it back like a hundred mm. times you know just in the in the act of doing it um it kind of I think that's sort of the theme right now is like when it comes to self-care is pick your like energetic focus like if you can't do it all right now like that's okay but really I think that we're all being sort of called to be really discerning about where our energy is going because it is taxed right now as you said with the anxiety like it's like Mm. you know for people who are very empathic like you and me and so many other people that are probably going to watch this it's like we're tuned into that all the time and we're constantly Mm. processing that and it's I think it's kind of like a vicious cycle at least for me how it shows up is it's like I'm taxed energetically and it prevents me from like doing the things that I know are going to charge me up again mostly meditation and then, so I'm even lower and but all of, you know, I'm still feeling all these things. So it's like a negative feedback loop where meditation mm. kind of just like throws a wrench in that. And you can kind of come back to that like net zero place and then build from there. But mm. um, yeah, it really takes like, and it's interesting because it's like, you know, so many of us were, were doing a little bit less, but somehow it's like harder. And yeah. Yeah. But so... Oh, I was just going to ask you, like, what advice do you have <laughs> for, like, getting, like, like, or how does your meditation routine look if you feel comfortable sharing? Like, what, like, what kind of space do you hold? Or, like, you know, wh- how does it show up in your day? Well, like, what mm-hmm. what routine around meditation has worked for you, I guess, is, like, my question. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm going to go back where, where you started that, like, you can't get, like, try not to get frustrated w- with yourself because, um I think we're in a very interesting time and we're really like holding this space for the earth to purge and we are like purging with it and any feeling that comes up, it's completely okay. It's divine. It's it's something that has to be there in the moment and you, you can't fight it. And when the feeling is like that you, like you... Of, of course, like taking time and just sitting with yourself uh, every day, like should be something that you allow those things to come up and then you can purge. But like meditation doesn't just have to be this like s- sitting in, in one place. Like maybe for you, like journaling is a, like a meditative way to, to get it out or putting like 
some specific music and like and and dancing into it or like finding uh, or maybe for some people it's just like you know running and they can get their head like completely clear but something that gives you this uh, alignment with the source and you can like just um, just be but I I think this like sitting just with yourself is also very good practice it could be also with a cup of tea or even with food this like mindful eating i think you're we're gonna get later into this food food thing and to me it's important as well that i will always do a meditation in a in the same place every day so this energy stays there and that can like help me to to like pick it up and and be more focused so it's not where i sleep it's not where i eat it's like a completely different place and I can just do this one thing there and um, yeah there's so many different ways for some people to start with a guided meditation it's a very good idea for some people maybe just um, four three two hertz music or something that gets you in alignment or maybe for some people it's best just in silence so but starting out I think the best is like guided version that can just guide you through this yeah yeah Yeah, that's great that's how I started was with guided meditations and Mm -hmm. I love that tip about creating a space that's purely for meditation because I mean I I know that concept works for like every other area of life right like your bed is just for sleep and sex your workspace is just for work Um, but I never thought of of applying it to meditation and it makes so much sense because it Mm -hmm. should be a space that's sort of sacred and that your brain associates it with you know just rest and kind of turning off to the external mm-hmm. environment. So mm-hmm. I love that tip. Yeah, that's great. And also I love that you're kind of, I think it's really, really helpful for people to know that there are other ways to meditate, to gain the same benefits. If sitting in stillness is just something that is is either not like interesting enough or like exciting or challenging in any way. So that's a really good reminder too. I know mm-hmm. that I've gotten into the meditative state um, through mindful eating, but also in exercise. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in 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 the end, like the goal would be that you can hold this state like throughout the day. Are you like washing the dishes, or you're like in the traffic? You can like kind of hold this mindful space. So like that's yeah. ideally. But <laughs> how empowering is that? Where you can actually use traffic as a reason to. <laughs> better yourself you know that's something that typically is really frustrating for people yeah or even washing dishes and household chores um Mm. it's a really great way to get the most of every moment yeah I love that (laughs) and I I wanted to ask about your like morning practices what do you usually do in the morning to to feel that you you're ready for the day That's a really interesting question because I'm in a really interesting place with how I approach a morning routine right now. So, um, you know, for a little while, I've been really sort of looking a little bit. I've been looking more at like the concept of a morning routine and then how it has worked for me as a woman. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of the stuff out there about creating a morning routine, it's about doing the same thing every single day, no matter what, um, for the sake of consistency, like the same order, the same waking up at the same time every day, rise and grind, get it done, you know, like having the most productive morning you possibly can. But the thing is, is that's like in doing a lot of like research and like the women's bodies and like how our hormones shift, you know, it, they shift over the course of 28 days, um, we're not actually designed to do the same thing every Mm. single day. And I I do believe that so much of our suffering and low self-worth and low self-esteem that stems from failure and not following through is merely us trying to fit our feminine way of being or what, you know, like the way that we really are naturally designed to be into structures and strategies that are actually designed more for the male hormonal system because the male hormonal system goes through all its fluctuations within 24 hours, but we take 28 days. So Mm -hmm. in knowing that I've really been trying to like sort of redesign what that looks like for me personally, 
And so I'm still in the very early stages of it, but it, it's really kind of just building a process of like tuning in to how really like objectively looking at my energy levels that day, what my moods are and asking myself, like, what do I genuinely need from a morning routine today? Not what I needed yeah. yesterday. Like yesterday, my, what I needed was a really, you know, hardcore cardio workout and, you know, loud music. But today what I really need is just sort of like deep stretching and maybe a little bit of journaling and not making it mean that because I'm not doing the workout today, the hardcore workout that I'm slipping or I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do or I'm not consistent as a person. And it's so funny because even though I know this, I know how the hormonal system works now, I'm, I'm embracing it and I want to create that for other women. It's crazy how ingrained that is in my mind because I still those feelings of guilt and shame still come up and I have to address it every single time um, if I remember to and that's the trick right it's like remembering so yeah it's an interesting question right now the whole concept of a morning routine and um, I'm just wondering I'm starting to really think that the trick for for women and people that resonate um, predominantly with the feminine energy which can be uh, men too um, you know, I think it's really important to sort of completely reconstruct what it means to to just perfect, like personally develop. You know, it's gonna look mm. different. It has to look different. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of unlearning and relearning. Yes. Something new. Exactly. So, so powerful. This is. I I love it. Um, yeah, like really like getting in touch with yourself what do you need in this moment and um yeah getting through those layers of of things that we have been doing over and over again also I see like so many women who are completely bulldozing their feelings and completely blocked from any kind of sensations emotions they just don't want to feel anything because otherwise they, it would be just so painful physically emotionally they've been just going in another direction for far too long and then like starting to come back from there um it has to be a decision and then like when all this like pain actually comes in and you start allowing to feel it it's 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 crazy hard so yeah. when there is a woman who has been in completely masculine energy her whole life and just bulldozing through the feelings and doing the work and being even like, let's say, in a workplace, maybe like someone who's a lawyer and is surrounded also with like men and also this masculine energy. And then now they realize that it would slowly start. They, they would like to open up to their feminine side. But what would be the first steps to do so you, you you don't get so scared that you just you, you can't go through this but you can like slowly start unraveling this side like how to start yeah I I think the first step would be to just sort of address any shame that might be coming up around the realization mm -hmm. that you know, um, that maybe you've been in the masculine energy more often than not for most of your life. I think it starts with self-forgiveness um, mm -hmm. and and not, not making it mean too much, you know, not making it mean that you've been being a woman wrong. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's not about like doing something wrong or right. It's just, and I think for me, that did come up for me quite a bit. And um, I mean, I've, I, I don't think I was ever like super into the masculine side of things, but there were areas of my life where there was an imbalance in that direction that really did inhibit me and, you know, contributed to some outcomes that I didn't really want. So I think for me, when I really started to sort of really explore this, I had to forgive myself first mm -hmm. for um, any, any behavior that might have stemmed from like more of like a toxic masculinity side. Um, yeah, so I would say that's the first step because again, if we're, if we're not coming back up, if we're not releasing all that judgment and that toxicity, then we're sort of just like, it's like trying to walk up a hill of sand, you know, it's just like, we'll get up and we'll slip, get up and slip, like get to that, really work on that forgiveness. And it's an ongoing journey. It's not a one and mm -hmm. done, but I do think it has to be addressed first. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Like, um, forgiving, to yourself um 
it's also uh, not even about like being in masculine energy, but like whatever you have done, which hasn't been in an alignment with, with yourself. I think there's, and when you start seeing um, some things that are not in alignment with yourself, it's like a Pandora box. You're going to open like so much more. And there's going to be, when you're like ready to see these things, they're like always coming and coming more and more, those things that you need to forgive for. And it's like, it seems like it's endless. It's like never, never ending. <laughs> of course, it gets easier and like it's, it's, slowly getting easier but like now and then it's again something very big comes up which um which you didn't see for a long time and 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 forgiving yourself um i think what has helped me is um is just the like realization that whatever i have done on my path like first realizing that there is no right or wrong, like from the source perspective, everything is expansion and it's just, uh, it's okay. You came here to have your experience and there is no right or wrong. And also like to see like who I am today, like I need to realize that everything had to happen exactly this way. If something had been a little bit different, I would be a bit different. So just like embracing yourself in this moment accepting and and then it's also okay to accept this path because it has made you who you are at this point so yeah maybe that has helped me a yeah. bit with this forgiveness mm. yeah and it kind of goes back to what we were talking what you said earlier about being your own best friend you know yeah. when it's like just the amount of forgiveness that we offer other people so often you know we can like offer that to ourselves too and yeah, it just takes yeah. practice. Yeah. You know what it reminds now? So important. The boundaries and learning to say no. Yeah. I'm a recovering yes. people people pleaser. I am. Oh, no. And this is a huge thing. Learning to say no. Boundaries. How do you deal with this? Oh my gosh, this is so hard. <laughs> This is probably, this is like my Achilles heel of personal <laughs> development is like boundary setting, um, especially, you know, it's sort of the, the sort of, ugh, it's so common, you know, as women, like we're so apt to, you know, certain specific patterns of like codependency and anxious attachment because so much of our self-worth has been, we've been told that so much of our self-worth is based off external factors that are often really intangible or hard to reach. And so it's just like left us in the space where it's like, well, I'll, I know I can please that's within my power. Right. I, if I, it's, I know that I can please my way into love. If nothing else, if my body isn't up to shape, if my face isn't up to shape, if I don't smile enough. Okay. But that's partially out of my control, but I can please my way to love. Yeah. And it's so, uh, it's so hard. And, um, oh gosh. Yeah. I think, Honestly, I think it's just starting small. Like, it is one of those things that once you do it once, it does become easier. And I think it, I think the reason for that is because once you do it once, and if you have an experience of doing it once with somebody who truly cares about you and will honor your boundary and not make you wrong and not get upset with you, then you have that experience of being like, oh, okay, like I'm safe to draw my own boundaries. Like it's not risky for me to draw a boundary. Mm. It does get tricky if we start to set boundaries with people in our lives who are less likely to, you know, honor that boundary. But that's also really important information too, because if that happens, then we know that that person really isn't in our life for our best interests. They're in our lives for their best interests because we're somebody that never draws boundaries with them. Mm -hmm. So that's where the path to drawing boundaries can be a little bit heartbreaking, I think, for some people, because you have to sort of learn very abruptly that there might be people in your life that really have no intention of being the same person for you as you were for them. Mm -hmm. So I think it really, it's about being, it's a discernment's a huge part of this, you know, discerning, um, is this really a loss for me that this person isn't honoring and becoming upset with me? 
is this really a loss or is this just a something I'm perceiving as a loss because it's so scary for me to be rejected? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think at the same time, when you show them how, how to do it in a healthy way, maybe you can somehow motivate them as well to, to look at their life. And if they, maybe they feel they also need to put some boundaries. So if you don't show up as an example, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's hard, but to be honest, I feel there's more those people who are not okay when you're setting boundaries than the ones who are like accepting it in a, in a healthy way. So, so I think this is something that we can collectively like shift. And, uh, when we start addressing that, we can just do the first step, um, on your own and then maybe it will like set an example this is what i'm i'm hoping for but for me as well it's 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 very hard it was especially when it's someone from your past and you really feel that you've had this very good friendship and you don't even want to see that maybe this friendship was never a real friendship it was just like some manipulation and some someone wanting something out of you and um you don't want to see the it this way because that also would bring this like shame and guilt and like fear and closing up again and all these things so um, yeah I think relationships are like the ultimate lessons we have here and there's so much to learn through these and um, yeah the healthy boundaries here are are one of the most important things yeah mm. absolutely yeah it's so it's, I, I do think that we, um, you know, for every woman that chooses to honor her own boundaries, we then make, we make, we give permission for other women to do the same. Mm -hmm. it, it does ripple out, you know, it's like, oh, it is safe. You know, like, look at this woman out there. She, she draws her boundaries, you know, she, she's in her power, um, you know, without being aggressive, she's in her power and drawing boundaries with kindness and mm -hmm. she's still loved, like she's still lovely. Yeah. Right. And um, it sounds really obvious. Like, I think most of us would agree on like a very like mental level. Like, of course, that's true. But we learn from experiences, not from just knowing something. We have to experience yeah. that feeling of being accepted with a boundary being drawn. Um, so I do think it's important to not only practice drawing boundaries with people who obviously need boundaries drawn against them, mm -hmm. because if you only do that, then you're only going to have the experience of when I set boundaries, people get mad, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also important to practice setting boundaries with people who love you and they really, they're, they're not genuinely trying to um, cross your boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. But you just, for whatever reason, you need to draw one in that moment yeah. um, and have the experience of somebody honoring it. And it's just something that we need to, we need to experience when we're on this path. And yeah. It can be messy sometimes, but it's worth it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and doing it for first with the people who, who can accept your boundaries. I think that's a game changer. From there, you can you build up this, um, this trust and, and you, can, you can do it um, with the toxic people as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It actually, um, it kind of reminds, it, it's making me think about how, you know, it's as a women, we're sort of taught that everybody needs to like us, right? Oh, of course. Everyone needs to like us. We need to be likable, universally appeasing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's no, there, it's a virtually impossible task anyway. And some of the like best advice I was ever given is know your audience. <laughs> so mm. You know, you, you can't please anybody anyway. So who do you please naturally by being who you are without any, with while drawing boundaries, you know, without holding yourself yeah. back, without inhibiting your truth, yeah. those are your people. Yeah. And those are the people that you want to put energy into. And, you know, if things do come up, if you do do something unpleasing that they don't find pleasing, then it's a, it's a more real conversation. It's not stemming from a place of, Oh, it's just, you know, they're constantly wanting me to be someone that I'm not. It's it's just, that's a relationship. There's always going to be moments where we displease each other at times. 
Mm -hmm. those are the relationships that we want to focus on and put that energy into repairing not everyone else yeah and beautiful it's a hard pill to swallow at first (laughs) but it's true (laughs) like authenticity like getting brutally honest who you are and then like just spreading it and then you will attract authentic people as well or then people who would take you as you are the same like when you show up authentically I think it would also like motivate other people to to get in touch with our, with their authenticity because when you see someone who is like so authentic just like see them like thriving and this is so powerful it's like magnetic and you're like what's what's happening with this person and and like part of you like recognizes like okay like what can I do to like reach this from inside me so I think this is how we can uh, like sharing this as as much as pos- possible and like showing up in that way can inspire others yeah definitely yeah so important Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what else do we want to address today? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like this was really good. I, I just think that like in this time, you know, it's sort of touching on, I think it's a really good time for women to sort of reassess just like reassess where they are in their lives. Like, you know, what did life look like for me before COVID? What does it look like now? You know, like, what do I want to return to? And what really wasn't serving me? We have this, like, we have this, uh, this element of pause here, which although is can be very, very painful in moments, especially because so many of us can't see people we love um, for a lot of people you know, video calls, although it's great. And how lucky are we to like be going through this in the age of technology versus like the Mm -hmm. 1980s or 1990s, it would have been a totally Mm -hmm. different story. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, it's still not enough. Um, And there is like a human contact element that we just need as, as primates, (laughs) as human beings, we need that like skin on skin contact with people. But, you know, it's in this time to sort of like look back and, you know, one of the benefits kind of going back to the boundaries thing of like being removed from people is that we can kind of get like a removed bird's eye view of those relationships Mm -hmm. that maybe weren't serving us, but we were just kind of in the flow of it. We were too busy to really address it fully. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think this is a time where a lot of people are coming up with some like underlying resentments are coming out. It's like, Ooh, I'm like really resentful against this person. Like this is a really close person in my life. What is that about? Is it because, Mm -hmm. Are they really like somebody who just pushes boundaries or did I just let my boundaries slip so much and then I made them the enemy because of it when really it was just because I didn't have those boundaries in place. So really deciding, you know, what is actually going on here if your boundaries have been crossed with someone in your life. Um, But yeah, just it's a it's a strange, strange time. (laughs) I don't think there's any right way to do COVID. There's no right way to do quarantine. Um, It's just, it's just every one day at a time. And yeah. Hmm. But this like slowing down, definitely that feeling that you don't need to rush all the time. And you, yeah, like, I think for me, the most important, like, this is the time to like build up this relationship with yourself and this communication with yourself trying to and the more you try the more you are there listening maybe at the, at the beginning you won't get like anything from inside because you have like suppressed all this for such a long time that like no voice is actually communicating back but the more you show up and you, your body is like trusting you again like it will this voice will get a bit like louder and louder and you can start like building this um, relationship and also when we talk about this feminine energy like for every woman it's completely completely different like yeah like for someone it might be like red high heels and and uh, makeup and for someone it's like just you know like being naked and hugging the trees or like whatever is like your version and this also like is that something that society is expecting from me or or this is what I authentically want so I think here is also like the meditation or the tuning in like 
so important that you get the answers from yourself and maybe you realize like no I never want to wear makeup ever again or maybe you just realize okay yes like I can like um, play with my face and I can create something that makes me feel more feminine so it, there is no right or wrong answer here but it just has to come from inside right yeah it's like the the tools that we use to sort of evoke that from us are not actually what's feminine they're just tools to evoke so it's not mm. that makeup is feminine or high heels are feminine it's yeah. just for some for some women or for people who identify with the feminine energy that's what that's what evokes that natural way of being out of them mm -hmm. it's what sort of it's like a catalyzer for yeah. that so that's like a, yeah. i really love that you said that because i think you know the last thing that um i think we want is for women who are early on this journey to think that if if makeup isn't something that is interesting to them or that they want to do and heels isn't something they want to wear like I gave up on heels when I was like 20 years old because they're incredibly <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> you know that they they don't feel like they can't do this or they can't <clears throat> embrace that side yeah, of themselves of course you know um it really is just that's the beauty of it. You know, the, the like feminine energy, it's creative. Like you can literally yeah. create what feminine energy looks like for you. Exactly. Um, and you know, it's, it's really, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. And maybe like a little bit more, some, some like practical tips to really like survive these like isolation days. Um, like, you know, like everything that we're consuming so important maybe less media, like checking what kind of foods you put in, into your body. I'm going to ask a question ab about that. And also like exercising, really like finding your type of exercise. Is it walking? Is it yoga? Is it like Zumba? Like whatever, um, <clears throat> yeah, like makes you, brings you joy, but uh, but really like moving. I think like that's that's the getting away from depression, like getting away from this um, stuck energy. So, so just like think that we need to talk that uh, how, how important is exercising during this time. And also maybe um, like what, what, what has helped me is that uh, when we talked about this like room and it's like energy for sleeping and energy for, for meditation and energy for um eating also like the clothes I wear throughout the day like I think it really helps me when I change them that I do yoga in, in like in in my workout clothes and then I change when I want to do want to be creative or when I'm going outside I change my clothes like that's really because clothes also they 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 have this energy in them and and I think um yeah like changing your clothes throughout the day like that's something that I've I've felt it's beneficial for me yeah that's such a good tip that's such a good yeah. tip <laughs> yeah like getting out of your pjs <laughs> yes. you know it might just start if that's where it, it might just start with that like literally yeah. not wearing pajamas all day long yeah. um and it, like as far as like other elements of self-care you know I think right now with just like the heightened anxiety and the heightened stress you know cortisol is just like Oh, it just wreaks havoc on us it, mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, in every way. And so I know for me, like a lot of my self-care practices that I've been adopting or just maybe not adopting, but leveling up have mm -hmm. been with the focal point of like lowering my cortisol levels. Right. Because it's just like that's a it's a it's just nice to have something like tangible, like that's what I'm working on, mm -hmm. um, especially right now, like a focal point. So as far as like cortisol you know, an, an exercise, like being outside in nature as much as possible, like actually going on yes. a brisk walk outside, you know, on my really, really hard, if I have like a couple span of like really, ugh, like just sticky days, like it's just, I'm not, you know, maybe like a little bit flatlined, maybe even some like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like even like low grade depression that we can kind of slip into yeah. like for a couple days. I've been finding that just going outside for a walk, like in the morning and just ex without any, without my phone, without music, just listening yeah. to nature and just walking has been so helpful. Um, mm. it, cause, and it's, it's, it's statistically proven or uh, scientifically proven, I should say to lower cortisol <laughs> levels. Yeah. Um, so that's like a really good place to start. And, you know, if, 
if really intense workouts feel like a little bit too much right now, just walking is perfectly fine. Exactly. It's perfectly fine. And um, you can get a really, you know, decent workout from that. Yeah. Um, another thing that I can't really harp on enough, and this is something that I'm always having to remind myself of and I'm getting better at, is just making sure that I'm drinking enough water. I mean, mm. it's it sounds so overly simplistic and sometimes the most potent, um, oftentimes the most like potent things we can do for our health seem overly simplistic to us when we first hear it because the diet industry and the wellness industry, they want to make, they want to complicate this process because when we're confused, they make money. So yeah. like, so, but truly it really comes down to just like being outside, drinking enough water. Um, and then really, I've also been leveling up my, um, the amount of vegetables that I eat in any given day. So, you know, I've been eating like a really big green salad at lunch, you know, ha- cooking vegetables at dinner. And I've even been having, if I do have breakfast, um, you know, like having vegetables in with that too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, these are all things that are going to keep our gut health health um, really strong. And there is such a strong correlation between gut health and mental health that has been mm-hmm. very fairly recently discovered. So yeah, those are just some like really tangible things that we can do. Um, you know, I've also been, I'm on this like journey to cut caffeine out of my life, which has been this mm-hmm. sort of area that I've been trying to just kind of dance around because I just love yes. coffee. So much. Um, but I do believe it's inhibiting me. Um, and I just person, and I, there's nothing wrong with drinking coffee really at the end of the day, if, if it works for you. But for me personally, I was just finding that I'm just getting to a point in my life where I don't want to be dependent on anything outside of myself to be yep. just do my life, you know? So yep. it's more of just like, I can do this. And so that's sort of where I'm at with that. And of course, you know, that al- that also lowers cortisol levels. And if, if people are drinking a lot of caffeine, especially in the form of sugary drinks or energy drinks, that's especially important to, you know, maybe start weaning off of those. Um, mm-hmm. The combination of sugar and caffeine is especially ugh, tough yeah. on the adrenals and on our yeah. hormones and all of those things. So yeah, just starting there, pick, pick, but just pick an area, start small, you know, mm-hmm. just pick. I, I think that um, it can be really easy to overwhelm ourselves with too much change too quickly. And it's, it, it stems from a good place. It's because we're excited and we see, yeah. we see a better version of ourselves in the future. So we're like, well, why not just do it all? Like get it all over yeah. with. But in reality, our brains don't work that way. And when we mm-hmm. do that, we just set ourselves up for the most brutal self-sabotage. Um, and so starting there. small. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we want to do it all and then, but we can't. And so, yeah. and then, and then of course it just kind of like reinforces this belief system that we don't, we never follow through or that we're failures or we can't, I just can't do this. Like all of these things, these stories. Yeah. And so, it lowers the self-esteem and it's all like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, slow is better. Slow progress is better than no <clears> progress <throat> because, you know, um, and just building up that momentum and it does build momentum. That's the thing is when you start small, you, you do get to a point where you can, you've built up the, you know, the muscle for follow through and you've, and, and also just, you've built that level of self-trust, which is so important when it comes to taking on change. So if you start small and then because it's small, you achieve it, you build self-trust and then you can take on bigger goals later. Um, but that's the biggest uh, thing that I've noticed with my clients is wanting to take on too much too soon and really yeah. rating them in and being like, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. to be, yeah. we're not, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, and we super underestimate the progress that can be made with just one habit change. Mm-hmm. Um, and we use it. Yeah. It's kind of like, what is that phrase? We, we overestimate what we can do in a year and we underestimate what we can do in five. But mm. Yeah. What about you? Like, what has been helpful for you? Like, first of all, I I love that you address address the the um, the thing that you go for a walk without the phone because I think, well, at the moment, like the social media and everything, like it keeps us connected, but at the same time, I think it's it's taking more energy than it maybe should, and we're just depending on that and um, yeah, to have like 
at least before going to sleep, some time off from the screens if if possible. And also building like an evening routine. We all like build these morning routines, but we never really like then we just like pass out like watching something or like um, still we have some food in our mouth or something like that it, it could happen. So like also creating an evening routine. So your body like knows, okay, like now it's like slowly the sleep mode is coming. This will like really give you a higher quality sleep. So so like tr trying to do it maybe uh, slowly discovering this evening routine uh, for yourself. And and yeah, I think for, for me, Mm, about like consuming all all this information like for me it's very important to somehow like filter this this media influence and like I don't um I don't want like like to get into the media so much I just want to I, I feel how it's uh, giving me so much negative emotions and um it like it lowers my vibration I, I feel it so I'm just trying to gravitate in another direction. Um, but even, yeah, even like things that we call like conspiracy theories or, or things that I, I used to be interested in, interested in, like at this point, I feel it also, it drains me. It, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. So like really honoring this feeling, what, what feels good in, in this moment. And um, yeah, and definitely nature is, is the number one medicine, getting outside, getting in touch with nature, really like even like barefoot walking if you can, if it's if it's summertime and and bringing nature inside of your room as well, like getting some flowers, getting some something living yeah. inside your your um, your your room, your bedroom, also like living foods kind of uh, raw foods, really like starting the day with some fruits and uh, yeah, getting those vitamins. It's uh, it's it's my favorite thing. Um, and yeah, like I, my, my relationship with caffeine is is also uh, it's it's a bit complicated. But um, now like back here in at home, people drink a lot of coffee here and um, like I used to be more this tea person, but now I'm just like having this this struggle. Uh, so I'm um, I'm trying to be gentle with myself and understanding um, slowly, uh, lowering its intake. Uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna get into hopefully into another video and we can talk about this like food habits and and this more more in depth. I Absolutely. would I would love that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I just want to briefly touch on that you talked about, you know, getting those vitamins in because that's one of the things I really um, work with people on is, you know, like, let's get the whole calorie thing out of our minds. And like, we're not talking about calories, but really just, you know, as many bites of food as possible, giving you a really high potency of nutrition. You know, both on the macronutrient and micronutrient level. So macronutrient being the correct balance of protein, carbs, and fats for your unique body. And then the micronutrient level, of course, being minerals, vitamins, but also all those phytochemicals that are found in what we call superfoods, <laughs> but they're really yeah. just new foods. Um, yeah. You know, those are the things that are really going to really like just sort of adopting that mindset of like, what can I bring into my diet versus what do I need to pull away? Like this is about kind of going into an abundance mindset with food as far as opposed to this like restrictive mindset with food that we we've been taught is the way of going about things, which keeps us trapped with food so much. Yeah. So, like yeah. one more thing about the superfoods, like being back here in Estonia, we have like so so many of those like weeds, which we call like weeds and you want to get rid of. And actually those weeds are the superfood. So I just like went outside yesterday and made like a salad from a bunch of leaves and and a soup from from something. And it's delicious. It's it's amazing. It's just right here. I can I don't need to go to the store to get anything like just going to the nature and see how much it actually provides and how much how much abundance is around you and like 
also like this more like sustainable living like how like during this quarantine time I, I felt like how I how I want to get more sustainable and like I, I feel I want to be able to yeah just uh, find find things around me which I can use I don't need to depend on on the government or on the stores all the time like like changing this um this thought patterns and like opening my eyes and seeing like what's really going on and how can I change these these habits a little bit so it's um yeah this is something important uh, yeah. to me that's super cool too because you're combining sort of two benefits of not only getting healthy ingredients that you can eat to support your body but you're also getting out in nature you're having that grounding experience so yeah. it's like you know kind of and I think a lot of the trick to living a healthy lifestyle is like, what can I layer on top of one another? You know, like, mm -hmm. how can I, I don't really like this phrase, but kill two birds with one stone, you know, like mm -hmm. how, and, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love that. Um, I know, and I'll try it and hold back my thoughts on why what you're telling me makes the cost of organic food and grocery stores so ridiculous but <laughs> you know but well yeah. I like there's so many ways to eat healthy and um this is a really great sort of piece of evidence that shows that we can actually eat well on a budget like we can we don't have to spend a fortune to be a healthy person and you know yeah. kind of um unraveling another one of those diet industry, wellness industry, indoctrinated myths that are put on us that in order to be healthy, we need to be able to spend $40 a month on this crazy supplement. And it's just not true. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. And, I'm, I'm, and I really want to get more in depth with all this um, healthy eating habits. We need to, we need to continue with that. Definitely. Yeah, for but, sure. But maybe we should wrap it up for for this time. How do you feel? Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. Yeah, this was super fun. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Like, Thank you, Kat. It was awesome. Let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Stay well. Stay healthy. You, Ciao. You too. Bye.